What's up everyone? Today we're talking about microcurrent devices in skincare. So to start it all off, a company did send me a microcurrent device to try out and potentially review for social media. And after trying it out and doing a literature review, I decided not to move forward with that. And so here we are. Okay, so when I talk about microcurrent, it's not a shot at any of the companies that sell microcurrent devices. I'm basically talking about the literature as it exists today when it comes to microcurrent technology and how I feel about recommending it to people at this time. So this is all about science and not about any of these particular companies. The three companies that sell microcurrent devices are Newface, Zip, and Forio. So those are the three big players in the field. So no shots at these companies, uh, but this is just a shot at the technology that exists today. Things may change. So that's what's always great about science is that we're always learning new things. There's new studies always coming out. But as of today, of the day that I'm doing this review, this is how I feel about the microcurrent literature as it exists today. So this is my first day using the microcurrent device. The company did send me the product to test out, but as you all know, I always keep it 100. Doesn't matter if they sent it to me or not. So these companies make huge claims and I'm really excited to try this out because if I can offer you guys all some non-invasive options for facial rejuvenation to make you look more youthful, I'll be happy to offer those to you. Be honest, the devices are a little expensive, but if they do what they claim, then they're worth it. First, you gotta apply the hyaluronic acid serum that comes with the device. So that outward motion helps to kind of move fluid, similar to facial massage. So that's what they recommend is these outward motions, motions against gravity to kind of help with aging. So after the first treatment, I didn't really notice any discomfort while using this. There was no pain at all. It actually didn't feel like anything. I also didn't notice any benefits yet, but it is after one treatment, just a little bit of that mild plumping that you get when you use any hyaluronic acid serum, like the ones that come with the device. But overall, no improvement after the first use but I'm gonna give it the 30 days and see how we do. So first, how did I come to my conclusions? One, I tried out the device for 30 days. So that's N equals one, that's only me trying it out, but that's my opinion of the device from trying it out. Two, me doing an exhaustive literature review. So I spent hours down the rabbit hole looking at microcurrent studies, hundreds of studies I read to come to these conclusions. It was like one of those times where you go down the internet rabbit hole and you just keep clicking, clicking, clicking until you find answers. So that's my literature review that I did. And then I went to the websites of the companies that sell these devices and they actually make claims on the website and they also cite their sources. And so I read all of those articles as well. So there are many claims that these companies make about these devices, but ultimately they're supposed to make you look more youthful. And one of the main things that these companies claim that these devices do is strengthen and tone muscle in the face. Strengthening the muscles in the face could potentially lead to a more youthful appearance by increasing volume in the face which can help to smooth out wrinkles. Okay, so in a minute, I'm gonna dive into the research that's actually been done on microcurrent, but to start it all off, the premise here is inherently flawed. Why do I say that? Because they're making the assumption that muscle atrophy or sarcopenia is a major contributor to the aging face. Although muscle loss can slightly contribute to aging in the face, the major contributors of aging in the face is actually redistribution of fat in the face, bone resorption and remodeling, loss of dermal collagen, and thinning of the epidermis. So way below all of these factors is muscle loss in the face. There was actually a wonderful study in the Journal of Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery where they did MRIs of the face to look at the soft tissue compartments to see which soft tissue compartments changed with aging. So they MRI'd younger women, and then they MRI'd older women, and they looked at the different compartments to see which areas had changed. And this study got me all charged up because I used to specialize in radiology, and so they're talking about MRIs, and I'm like, this is my wheelhouse right now. And what they found was that fat distribution in the face and the size of the fat compartments in the face did change, but what didn't change was the volume of facial muscles. And they actually came to the conclusion in the discussions of the article that although atrophy of muscle occurs in the rest of the body as we age, that that degree of atrophy likely doesn't occur in the face just because we're always moving our face. So this very concept of understanding facial aging has literally revolutionized plastic surgery and cosmetic dermatology. So back in the day, they just used to put implants and fillers in locations that they thought that fullness needed to be achieved, but it's actually advances in the understanding of what occurs during aging that has really advanced the field of cosmetic dermatology and plastic surgery. So instead of doing cosmetic surgery and changing things in a way that are unnatural, what they have done now is that they have studied how the face ages, 
how the bone remodels, how the fat compartments change, how things move in the direction of gravity, all those factors to make a more natural appearance when they do plastic surgery. So instead of putting filler in a location that you actually haven't lost volume, they put fillers in locations where we know the aging face loses volume. So understanding that muscle loss, not a major contributor to facial aging is actually really important because it wouldn't be something that we're gonna actively target in our cosmetic procedures. But I will concede that there was a study that showed that facial exercises could modestly improve the facial fullness and another study that showed that electromuscular stimulation, so stimulation with electrical current that actually causes muscle contraction that you can feel, that that also slightly increased facial fullness and youthfulness. And so those studies do exist. But the thing is that microcurrent doesn't actually cause muscle contraction. You can't actually feel the microcurrent. Your muscles are actually not contracting. And so uh, using that study to justify microcurrent actually doesn't even work. And like I said, the premise of muscle loss is, is slightly flawed. The last thing that I want to say is that muscle hypertrophy uh, or increased muscle strength and muscle movements can actually lead to wrinkles, which is why we use Botox to paralyze the muscles temporarily to help soften wrinkles. And so I don't even know that increasing muscle bulk or muscle strength would be a good thing long term for the face. It would actually likely lead to more wrinkles long term. Okay, so we're off to a bad start here because muscle loss is only a minor part of aging of the face. And second, increased muscle tone could potentially lead to worsening wrinkles. So on to three, which is what you all came here for before listening to my TED talk, is does microcurrent even work and where is the literature on it? All right, so there was some study done uh, a while back that showed that microcurrent devices could increase the ATP that's available and then potentially lead to increased protein synthesis in tissue. So that's a really interesting mechanism. So what does that actually mean in terms of rejuvenation of the face? Well, it's essentially meaningless because this is a mouse study. We have no idea what that's gonna mean for rejuvenation of the face. Having ATP available locally is an interesting concept and it could help potentially. ATP is essentially biological energy that we need to complete daily function. So when you contract your muscles, you use up ATP. And when you eat a lot of sugar, you store ATP. And then when you undergo aerobic respiration, you produce ATP. And so ATP is biological energy, essentially. So increasing that locally seems promising, but what does it actually mean in a person? We don't really know for facial rejuvenation. There was another study done on mice that showed the microcurrent after injury to the tissue occurred could help repair the muscle. And then there's another study that was done in humans that showed that microcurrent could increase muscle strength. But what they did in the study was they applied the current for like 40 minutes or something, and then they measured right afterwards the muscle strength and the ability to complete certain tasks. Uh, so this is not something that they did long term. This was a, a one and done type of study. So again, um, what does that mean for facial rejuvenation? We have no idea. Okay, when it comes to mouse studies, mouse studies are a dime a dozen. So if you're like me and you've read thousands of research articles uh, in your career and doing research, you'll find a mouse study for almost anything. In fact, you can find a mouse study that says that turmeric builds muscle. And so uh, mouse studies are, are a good start from a scientific perspective. When you're looking for something, you find a mouse study, it may lead you in the right direction, but ultimately it's not conclusive in humans, which is why we then go on to do human clinical trials. The studies that have been done in humans, uh, which are minimal, to be honest, are a little bit more promising, but the only problem with them is that we don't know what the settings were on these microcurrent devices. We don't know uh, what exact current they were using. We don't know what voltage they were using. We don't know often how long they applied the device for. So there's so many things inherently wrong with it that we don't actually know if it applies to these commercially available devices like the new phase that, that we're selling, right? So um, even though in some of these studies, uh, there was some benefits to microcurrents, we don't know if they actually apply to the devices that we're actually selling. And the last thing I found when doing my comprehensive literature review is that the most research in microcurrent that actually looks promising has been done in the wound care literature. So it seems as if when microcurrent is applied to wounds that it can actually help to speed up the healing process and help things heal better. So that's actually the most promising literature and literally no one's talking about it. None of these websites are talking about it. So in wound healing, it may actually be beneficial. And so that's a little bit where the promise is. Is it stimulating fibroblasts to build collagen? What is it doing that's actually helping with wound healing? We don't exactly know at this time, but that's actually where it looks the most promising to me. So I'd actually like to see microcurrent devices used for potentially helping wound healing procedures. So for example, after you get microneedling done, 
or after you get laser resurfacing done, it would be nice to actually try to use microneedling in those situations to help to boost collagen and help repair the skin faster potentially. So I think that that would actually be a really applicable role for microcurrent at this time. But the other roles right now, there just doesn't seem to be any data for facial rejuvenation with microcurrent. All right, so this is my day 30 of using the microcurrent device. To be honest, I didn't notice any substantial benefit to my skin at all, but I also didn't experience any side effects. Really was hoping that this was gonna be the holy grail of my skincare routine. It was relaxing, but even though it was only five minutes a day, I find that to be pretty time consuming. I did notice maybe it helped a little bit with puffiness in the morning. But other than that, I really couldn't tell a difference with it. Overall, I'm disappointed, but we'll find something better. As you all know, I'm always trying to empower you guys to take care of your skin at home. I'm always looking for new natural ways for you to improve your skin. This one just didn't do it. One thing I learned in medical school is that I'm constantly humbled all the time. There's always new research coming out. There are always things that I don't know. There are new studies that are always coming out. And so I'm constantly learning new things and adapting to that. So I'm not saying that these devices don't work at all and that they're gonna have no role in facial rejuvenation in the future. What I'm saying is as the literature exists today, as it's been researched today, there's not enough research to suggest you should be using this in facial rejuvenation. Now, if you're somebody that's used this device and you really like it, there's one potential reason why you get that immediate plumping effect is that all these devices are using a hyaluronic acid serum that comes with the device in order to uh, track it over the face, right? So it's a pretty uh, heavy hyaluronic acid serum that you apply to the skin and then you, you run the device over it. And we know that hyaluronic acid causes an immediate plumping effect as a very strong humectant. So it could be the hyaluronic acid that's helping to smooth out those wrinkles temporarily and not the microcurrent device at all. So I'm not saying that the technology doesn't work because I'm sure there are people out there that you'll find, you'll find other reviews where people will say, I use the device, it helped me so much. Look at these pictures that I did. And I'm not saying it doesn't work. What I'm saying is that if, for me, you know, as a doctor to recommend something to somebody and it's going to cost $300 for you to go out and buy it and try it, I'd like to have some research that suggests that this has been used on the face and it's helped with facial rejuvenation. And this is why it helps with facial rejuvenation. Here's the science behind it. And it doesn't need to apply to that particular device all the time, but at least show me that the technology works and why it works. And then I can say, okay, let's consider recommending that to somebody after I try it. When you have three major companies marketing these devices aggressively for $300 plus, you want to have at least some studies that show that it works. So what I want to do is I want to challenge these companies instead of putting money towards ads and everything, let's talk about putting some money towards doing a clinical trial on this. It would actually be really easy to do. All you have to do is give 100 people a sham device that doesn't work and tell them to use it for 30 days and then you give another 100 people a device that does work, and then you have an independent evaluator that doesn't know which device the person used, look at photographs of the person, or evaluate them in person. It would probably cost you less, and then once you have the data behind it, then people like me will, will be willing to recommend something like that. And so at this time, um, I can't recommend a device like this just because I don't think that the science is there behind it. But if you're somebody that's using the device, you know, I don't think it's harmful unless potentially you have a pacemaker or some type of implantable device that's going to actually pick up current. The risk with that would be relatively low, but I think these are relatively safe devices overall. So if you're using it and you love it, I'm not saying to stop using it. I would just like to see more research before I start recommending it to people to spend $300. Okay, so one, the device didn't work for me. Two, I think the premise is inherently flawed that building muscle is going to help with facial rejuvenation. And three, I think the science is just not there for these particular devices at this time. So I'd rather spend $300 on things that we know will help, something like a retinoid, something like vitamin C, something like niacinamide, or procedures that we know that work. They might be slightly more expensive, but they'll, they'll be more effective for sure. Microneedling, laser resurfacing, Botox, filler, things that we actually know works, or do nothing at all. But at the end of the day, save your $300. And as soon as the information comes out that says that these are the holy grail skincare products, I'll be the first one to log back in and let you guys know all about it. But for now, I hope you guys found this helpful. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Please let me know your thoughts and your experiences with these devices. Like I said, I don't know everything, but, but I just know the science isn't there right now. So stay safe, enjoy your holiday season, everyone, and save some money. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah.
Yeah. <laughs>